It is a Thursday night here in Morgantown, and we are set for some college football at Milan Pushkar Stadium as the West Virginia Mountaineers take the field, ranked number 13th in the country, and they will host the Baylor Bears here in a Big 12 matchup. And hello to everybody, Justin Kutcher alongside DeMarco Murray and Petros Papadakis. Jen Hale with us on the field. Guys, both these teams are coming off a bye week. Both these teams are coming off a loss. Let's first talk about West Virginia. They lost at Iowa State. Will Greer, their quarterback, was held to just 100 yards. But this kid, DeMarco, he is a special quarterback. Yeah, they did a good job versus Iowa State, but he's one of the top quarterbacks in the nation. He has full command on this offense. They allow him to make checks at the line of scrimmage, look outside, if he doesn't like the look, he'll change it up and give signals to his receivers. He's a very cerebral guy, throws a great ball, great timing. He has a huge, huge arm down the field. He has to be better at getting the ball out of his hand. That's one of his strengths. His quick release. Last week, he held on to the ball, trying to be a playmaker, which he is. They don't want to take that away from him. But this, this week, he has to be better. Get the ball out of his hands. Get to those athletes on the outside. 14 of his 17 games at West Virginia, he's thrown for 300 or more yards. As far as the other side, Petros, for Waco, for, for the Baylor Bears, Charlie Brewer. This is a guy who last year in Waco, he kind of surprised the Mountaineers. But now he has a stranglehold on the starting position position for Matt Rule's team. Brewer is a tough kid. And when I say tough, I mean tough as Naugahyde. This is an inexperienced offensive line. He takes a lot of hits, but he gets the ball out, moves in the pocket well, and runs from that formation as well. He's got an elite group of wide receivers, and you talk about taking care of the football. Only three interceptions on the year. Brewer gives the Bears a chance here in the mountain. A look at the Big 12 Conference standings. You see these two teams and how important this game is. West Virginia at 3-1, and one, trailing Texas in the conference standings. For more on this game, let's check in with the fourth member of our team, Jen Hale. Justin, both of these teams are out for the redemption of a bounce-back win tonight. The Mountaineers are coming off one of their most embarrassing losses in years after generating just 150 yards of offense. Unusual for this high-octane offense. How do they respond tonight? Coach Dana Holgerson believes the answer. This game could dictate the tone for the rest of the season. Meanwhile, Baylor, so close to knocking off Texas the last time they played. They are hungry for the honor of postseason play in just two games away from bowl eligibility so Justin a victory tonight in hostile territory on national television would certainly make a statement for this Bears program no doubt big game for both these teams West Virginia won the toss they will receive Drew Galitz will kick off for Baylor Marcus Sims is back deep and we are underway here in Morgantown Mar Marcus Sims will take a knee in the end zone as we Welcome the Mountaineers to the field, and we find out what we should watch for, Mr. Papadakis. Well, let's talk about my guy, David Sills, one of the most smart and calculated wide receivers in the country. Great at the goal line. Mr. Touchdown, but he's great all over the field. Has a great rapport with Will Greer. The best defensive player that Baylor has is James Lynch. That was the very first home visit that Coach Rule had when he got the Baylor job, and this guy's all over the field, just a down-home, country-strong dude. On first down, there is the first pass of the game. It is to Sills, and Sills gets outside. He's going to be out about a yard shy. That first down marker picks up nine. And this is what Greer is so good at. He saw Lake Lynch come in on that pressure outside. Just simple. Let me get the ball in my hands, get it to my athlete on the edge, and let him get yards upfield. 33 catches now in the season for Sills. Another quick pass this time to Sims, and Sims nearly slips the tackle as he is down at the 47-yard line. Well, we met with uh, Sims and all the receiving core yesterday, and that is a guy that can really turn it on and get downfield in a hurry. Yeah, he leads the team in receiving yards. He's a kick returner, punt returner. This is an athletic guy, very versatile, but we saw him put that foot in the ground on the last play. He gets upfield fast and in a hurry. He got 13 yards on that one. In motion is Jennings. Greer with some time has Jennings wide open down the sideline. There goes Gary Jennings. How about the start for West Virginia? 53 yards. A lot of frustration.
frustration being alleviated with that drive for the Mountaineers. You'll see Baylor all night. They're going to sub in about 25 guys on the defensive side. Sometimes it causes a lot of confusion. They bring blitz from the secondary linebacker position, and sometimes you're not on the same page, so you have to be aware. And that was just a wide-open play. That's a bad start for the Baylor Bears defense. Evan Staley on for the extra point. This receiving core all around is the best group that Dana Holgerson has had here at West Virginia. On that first drive, Will Greer got each of those receivers in on the action. The first play was to Sills, the second to Sims. The 53-yard touchdown was to Gary Jennings, and it's 7-0 West Virginia here in Morgantown. In their last game, West Virginia had 152 total yards. On that drive in three plays, they had 75 yards in 50 seconds. It'll be Evan Staley to kick off. Trevor White and Chris Platt are back deep for the Bears. And this will go into the end zone for a touchback. It leads to a 53-yard touchdown pass to Gary Jennings, his seventh touchdown catch of the year here on first down. On first down, the give is to Hasty, and Hasty gets a first down and more up to the 39 as he gets 12, tackled by Kenny Robinson, and that was a good read there by Charlie Brewer. You said it right before the break, DeMarco. You're waiting for one of these backs to pop one. That was pretty close. Yeah, and he, he's, he's right there. He leads the Big 12 with, all, with 19 receptions on the year. Brewer over the middle to Hurd, and that's intercepted. Torres Avery back the other way, and a flag is thrown when Avery goes down. Jalen Hurd, the intended receiver. Well, they've been going over the middle a lot with the football, and they haven't had as much success. Charlie Brewer has been pretty accurate. During the return, holding number six of the intercepting team, 10 yards from the end of the run, first down, West Virginia. And I don't know if uh, Jalen Hurd didn't expect that ball or it just came out a little hot from Charlie Brewer, but it got right through the wickets, it seemed, in his hands, and there you see the hold at the end of the play there. That's Dravon Askew Henry on the hold. It's hard to block when you don't usually do it. There's Coach Gibson with some love for Toyas Avery. Another interception for Coach Rule's team. First time in Charlie Brewer's career, he's thrown two interceptions in a game. He's thrown two in this quarter. to tight end Wesco. Wesco stretching out, gets down to the 10-yard line. Trevon Wesco, there is a flag on the play. That's a big tight end, 280 Offside. pounds. Offside, defense, number 38. Penalties declined, result of the play, first down. All right, so we talked about the importance of that first down conversion on third down before. But now the takeaway, and look what West Virginia has a chance to do right here. It's another wrinkle right there. Just finding Wesco, having that receiver come in motion to see it there, man, the zone, and then Wesco right at the scene. Red zone, you got to watch out for Seals here. They have a great connection, he and Greer. Petaway takes the handoff. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage. B.J. Thompson with the tackle. You mentioned red zone and red zone efficiency for this team. When they are in the red zone, typically they will punch it in. A lot of weapons, especially Sills and the communication he has with Weir Greer. Hands it off again to Petaway. And Petaway will pick up two yards. Clay Johnston with his fourth tackle. This defense for Baylor they're putting up a fight here. Yeah, the Baylor front does a good job of not allowing the West Virginia offensive line to build to their linebackers. Definitely led by James Lynch and Ira Lewis. This defensive front, they're going to give this West Virginia offensive line a lot of problems in the run game. Let's see if they can control the line of scrimmage all night. Sills in the slot. 
Greer has to get rid of it, facing pressure, throws the back of the end zone, and it's incomplete. T.J. Simmons came down with it, but Derek Thomas was there covering him. The transfer out of Temple. I, I know that was an incomplete ball, but Will Grigg feeling pressure in the middle, but the fact that he can just lob this ball up and get out of pressure, I mean, he's an athletic guy. He doesn't get a lot of credit for his mobility inside that pocket, but he has great touch on the ball to put that ball exactly where he needs to be. It wasn't the right place, no doubt about it. Would have been a great catch. And he does connect. So they finally punch one in for the uprights. It's 10-0 West Virginia here in the first quarter. It's only 10-0 right now, West Virginia leading Baylor, but it could be a lot worse if you think about it. Two turnovers, it feels like West Virginia has had the ball the entire first quarter. Well, Baylor's only really had the ball uh, 10 snaps, and uh, they've only moved it about 21 yards, so they need a lot more from their offense. They need to possess the football a lot more, and Coach Gibson loves it because his defense has barely been out there. He hasn't had to make a whole bunch of calls. He could save a lot of that stuff for later in the game. Only three points off those two turnovers for West Virginia. Evan Staley to kick off. Trevor White back deep with Chris Platt. The fair catch is signaled and made by Platt, so they will start at the 25-yard line. On first down, the handoff is to Jalen Hurd, and they want to get him the ball somehow, some way. They give it to him right there, and he picks up 14. And this is their playmaker. He can run inside, outside, but this is a big, strong guy coming at you. You're not going to want to tackle him high, but when he gets a full steam of head, he's not going down easy. All knees and elbows. Kept by Brewer. And Brewer. We'll get a couple yards on first down. Darius Stills with a tackle. And they want to run the ball. They just haven't had much success when it comes to a three-man front. This three-man front can be very confusing for the offensive line, knowing who's that fourth or fifth guy down. But you have to just have great communication at the line of scrimmage, letting your running back know, hey, this guy's down. He's down. we got to figure out who's the fourth guy coming at all times. Could be any of these guys end up down on the line of scrimmage. And absolutely, this offensive line has had trouble with three down defenses. Brewer again keeps it on the zone read. He gets back to the line of scrimmage. So third and long is coming up once again. The tackle made by Darius Stills. Darius Stills and his brother Dante Stills on this defensive front. The son of Gary, who played here at West Virginia and then in the NFL with the Kansas City Chiefs. They're local. They're from in the state. They love that here in, in Morgantown. Baylor converted on third and nine on their previous drive. Now they're trying to convert on third and seven here. They're bringing pressure here. Here it comes. And Brewer gets taken down. The 35. Giovanni Stewart was the first one there. Drayvon Askew Henry there as well. A loss of six. They picked up the first pressure, but not the second. Yeah, Askew Henry coming off the edge. He's a guy who started and played in 45 games, but this is what Tony Gibson wants to do. He wants to confuse Brewer, sending guys at different levels, and Brewer just has to get the ball out of his hands. He sees it, but you have to have a route that can break out in order to beat that pressure when it gets there. Galitz on to punt again. Marcus Sims, fair catch, signaled and made at the 28-yard line. A 36-yard punt for Galitz. This Mountaineer team enters this game after starting the season 5-0. They did have a game canceled against NC State due to Hurricane Florence. And then they go to Iowa State, and they have one of their worst performances in a long time, losing 30-14. to And now you have this upcoming at Texas next week versus TCU in two weeks at Oklahoma State and then versus Oklahoma. That's why this game is so critical for Dana Holgerson and the Mountaineers. And this is 
what they need to get back going before they play those tough opponents can they get back going with timing and rhythm on the offensive side on the defensive side they have to get back to winning but they have a tough road ahead Trevon Wesco with the catch and the run of nine yards There's another West Virginia guy and they've done a much better job of handling the pressure that Baylor's bringing than they did in Ames a couple weeks ago that was very difficult for them second down and one final play of this first quarter Greer He's got room to run, but he's going to pass instead to the sideline to T.J. Simmons. To T.J. Simmons makes the catch and gets the first down for five. One second remaining. And now the clock strikes zero. So the first quarter is over. A lot happened in that first quarter. West Virginia scored in the first minute a touchdown. They missed a couple of field goals, made another one. They lead 10-0 over Baylor at the end of one. Tavon Austin who electrified the crowd here in Morgantown. He is back in the house. He had a big game against Baylor back in 2012. Petros was in the house for that one. It was pretty amazing. I saw him move him to, to tailback to play against Oklahoma and run for about 280 yards. Whoa, whoa, Petros. Don't mention that ever again, all right? <laughs> Greer down the sideline. What an adjustment by David Sills, a 42-yard completion. David Sills with great timing, goes up and grabs the ball. This ball was floated a little high and left in the air by Will Greer, but don't worry, Sills says, I'll make it right, goes up and grabs it. That's a huge catch to get the first down. And now on first down, the handoff to Kennedy McCoy gets back to the line of scrimmage. What's amazing about David Sills is this is a guy who is a highly recruited quarterback coming out of high school, and now he is an NFL prospect as a receiver. Well, it's from the seventh grade, really. I mean, he had a lot of hype. Lane Kiffin offered him a scholarship at USC. Of course, he didn't have to talk about it, but Sills got to talk about it a whole bunch. Holgerson flirted with him playing quarterback. The shot to the end zone overthrows his intended receiver, Dominique Maiden. Maiden was open if that throw is on target, and Greer knows it. That one got a little away from him, but Maiden made a, an amazing move, running a post corner, and he was wide open. If Greer could have may have taken too much touch, you see here, post, and then a corner, oh. and he just... That was a great route. I mean, <laughs> wide open. Well, you saw everybody <laughs> going with Sills. Everybody's looking at Sills near the goal line, and Maiden was able to slip out there. Really nice body control. Not throws you usually see Greer miss. Third down. Greer, he gets sacked. Taken to the ground by James Lynch. What a big play right there, as they may have taken him out of field goal range. A loss of 15 on that sack. And talking to Coach Spav last week, this is where Greer gets in trouble. He's a competitive guy. Reminds me of Romo when it comes to, I don't want to throw the ball away. I want to make a play happen. But at times, you always have to live the fight another down and know the situation, more importantly. You're in field goal position. Throw the ball away. Let's kick three and move on. Good job by Lynch, not jumping, not leaving his feet, finishing that play. This will be a 47-yard field goal attempt here for Evan Staley. He's one for three. Daly's kick from 47 is good. He's now two for four. They don't get seven, but they do get three. It's 13-0 Mountaineers. It's 13-0 West Virginia over Baylor, and I have to admit this. I think it's the first time I've seen four field goal attempts in the span of about 17 minutes. The Mountaineer, one of the great mascots in the country, you got to think he may have a squalor in his back pocket to keep his money over there. That's awesome. That would be a great Halloween costume. <laughs> if I can borrow that, if I can borrow that, that would be awesome there. That's real full buckskin there. I believe it. Evan Staley to kick off to Chris Platt and Trevor White. This will go into the end zone. The Baylor Bears won in 11 last year. They started out really well this year, three and one. They had a heartbreak loss in Austin, 23-17. They made a heck of a comeback. And as Jen mentioned at the top of the show, two more wins and they can go bowling, which would be quite a turnaround 
for Matt Rule and this Bears team. He's, he's done an amazing job this second season after battling all those horrible things that happened around the university, helping a youthful team just navigate in this hard division. I mean, he's done an amazing job for year two. Charlie Brewer under center. And off to Michael Hasty and Hasty gets hit at the line by Kenny Robinson. That's the second time Robinson's come up with a big hit. One in the secondary, now one at the line. He's a physical player. Coming back in, he can play the run game. He can cover as well, but he's a physical, physical free safety. 6'2", 198 pounds. Baylor's got to find some offensive stability here. Their defense has been really heroic, actually, in the first half, but I'm not sure how much longer they can take these three and outs. It's Hasty again, and Hasty gets hit in the backfield again. This time it's David Long, the leader of that defense. David Long, that's his 11th tackle for loss there. Leads the team in total tackles with 61, three sacks. But you, here you see, no one blocks him. He has a great feel for this running game. And he's a very smart player. Talking to Coach Gibson, he's a coach on the field. He loves to practice. They love everything about him. He's a hard, hard-working guy football but more importantly he's a physical linebacker and the leader of this defense back-to-back -back tackles for losses leads to third and 12. pressure coming again that's three tackles for a loss in a row it's two in a row for david long that's a great call by coach gibson he brought the boundary corner here and you see the running back goes out to get the boundary corner, leaves David Long with no one blocking him, but unbelievable job by Coach Gibson dialing that blitz up, and they just brought more than what the Baylor Bears offense can, can, can block. I mean, you, you got to give them a lot of credit for that. Galitz to punt from the goal line. They bring pressure. He just gets it away. Sims able to dive and make the catch, and Sims took a hit as he went down after a 37-yard punt. And you can see Marcus Sims right now is in pain on the turf for West Virginia. David Long, back-to-back -back tackles for a loss. That sack for a loss of eight forced the punt. So great starting field position here for West Virginia at the 48 of Baylor. On first down, the handoff to Alex Sinkfield. And Alex Sinkfield, who missed his first last four games, is back in. Let's go back to that previous play, though. As a running back, Hasty's here. Your responsibility is to be inside out blocking here. You have to start with your first key, and that's long. You have to let the quarterback take care of that corner blitz. But there, Hasty has to protect this guy inside. That's why that protection broke down. And another three and out for the Baylor Bears. And, and how much can this defense handle? Well, they just gave up an eight-yard run. Now second down and two. David Sills in motion. Flag is thrown. Greer throws it away. And let's wait to see what this flag is as Greer runs all the way down to his own 27, and he's kind of flexing that left knee. There is no foul for intentional grounding. There was a receiver in the area. That is what Jake Spavital, the offensive coordinator, was talking about, DeMarco. Get rid of the ball. <laughs> you don't see anything. Yeah. And I know you want to make a play. I know you want to be great and, and, and load up those stats and move this offense. But every once in a while, you have to live to fight another day. Yeah, last week, he, they gave up seven sacks, and five or six of those was on was on Greer. If he would have just thrown the ball away there, you see, during the bog week, they had a long talk and discussion with him. Hey, you don't want to take your playmaking ability away, but sometimes live to fight another day. Throw the ball away, and let's move on. Letty Brown and Alex Sinkfield are in here on first and ten. There was a penalty against Baylor, and the handoff to Sinkfield up the middle. And Sinkfield will get two yards. They didn't tell us about the Baylor no. penalty. They told us about the intentional <laughs> grounding that wasn't a penalty. Sinkfield is back after missing the last four games due to an injury, but. He's a, he has the ability to hit the home run. The freshman, smaller guy, 5'9", but they think he can be their explosive back that takes it the distance at any time. Guys, how about this? West Virginia, 21 plays in Baylor territory, yet only 13 points. And swinging out to Sinkfield, and Sinkfield 
Can't go anywhere. Well, that's he gets tossed to the ground by Greg Roberts, and he's going to lose a couple yards. Yeah, that's kind of what Iowa State did. They let him drive the ball on occasion, but they didn't let him score points. And looking at this Baylor team, that's what they're doing. They're nickel and diming them, having some big drives, but they're not giving up those touchdowns. They're giving up one touchdown on the first drive, and the last two opportunities have been field goals. Coach Rule's defense has been the bamboo. Bend, but do not break. Third and ten. Tim Fields, good effort, a good run, but will come up short of the first down marker as he gets seven. Henry Black with the stop. Running the ball there, they knew that they were going to be in four down territory. Let's try to get some yards here. Let's see if we can get into a fourth and three, fourth and four situation to let our quarterback do what he does best. Maybe look for David Sills. All the receivers, stats on the near side. Letty Brown in the backfield. Greer keeps it. Greer able to slip a tackle and get the first down. The fifth-year senior quarterback out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Was able to get the first down. How about does the stop move there? He does a great job of reading that defensive end. And then, oh, let me give a little shake. I have some mobility to him. Not a running back. I'm going to throw, but I can make a guy miss, stop his feet, going to get the first down. But that's that competitive nature that we're talking about, not going down, not giving up on the play. That's going to hurt Terrell Bernard in the film room. Now taking the shot to the end zone. It's Sills. Touchdown, West Virginia. From Will Greer to David Sills, the eighth time they've connected for a touchdown this year. And the Mountaineers finally punch one in again. Just the touch. Just watch the touch on this ball. Unbelievable job putting the ball in the bread basket, dropping it in, and Sills makes an easy catch. I mean, you can't put that ball any better than Greer did. Finding his best target when it comes to touchdowns at David Stills, who's running the go route. And if you're Baylor, you got to switch it up a little bit more, confuse him just enough. Well, we talked about bend, but don't break. I think maybe it's just exhaustion. Sills with his eighth touchdown catch of the year. It's 20 to nothing, Mountaineers. You're only going to keep Grill, Greer, and Sills down for so long that close to the red zone. And I, I got to say, I'm not putting this on the Baylor defense right now. It's on the Baylor offense to get some, some time out there. They've only had 741 time of possession. No doubt about it as this one goes through the end zone again. John Lovett is in at tailback, and Lovett takes the handoff. And Lovett will get four yards. Second down and six. Lovett's pretty lengthy running back. Six feet tall. Incredible lead when he runs the ball. Really a one-cut runner. And a guy that's physical could take a little bit out of a defense. In fact, he might play a little defense tonight is what we heard. Second down and seven. Brewer rolling out. Brewer Instead of getting rid of it, runs out and is going to take a loss of six yards. He could have just thrown that ball away, and it would have been just yeah. down to see another day. Yeah, that's not what you want to see. Now it's third and long. He had a manageable third down potentially, but I, I don't understand that play by Brewer there. I mean, he has to get rid of the ball. He's made a lot of great decisions throughout the course of the year, but tonight, for some reason, he's had a couple overthrows, and he's not playing like himself tonight. There is former Baylor Bear Jeff Nixon, one of the offensive coordinators for the Bears, trying to figure it out upstairs. Charlie Brewer has to throw on third and long, and incomplete pass. His target was Tyquan Thornton. Thornton. Tried to hit him on the back shoulder, but he threw the ball a little, little too far outside, out of bounds, and yeah, Brewer just off to a shaky start right now, along with the rest of this Baylor offense. And this goes back to Petros, what you were saying. This is not on the Baylor defense. This is on the offense right now because this is yet another three and out. The defense is going to be exhausted. Yeah, we try to talk about complementary football, and you get especially exhausted on the road. Drew Galitz, a high punt. Marcus Sims, the fair catch. 
as he falls to the ground at the 33-yard line. A 45-yard punt with a fourth three and out for Baylor tonight. West Virginia takes over. Will Greer on first down. The handoff is to Lundy Brown, who gets two yards. Tight end, tight end. Good push in the backfield by James Lynch to make the running back cut up, but heck of a job. That's one of their more physical and more athletic defense linemen right there. Yeah, he's their best guy. He really, he's the straw that stirs the drink for this whole defense, and they've had their work cut out for him. Greer, he's got time. Down the sideline for Sills. Sills makes the catch to the end zone again. 65 yards. I'm sure that was on his mind coming into this game, but Sills is just a fantastic receiver. One's a great route, but what a throw by Greer. Another explosive play, but impressive. This is an impressive offense. I mean, they got weapons. They've thrown the ball to eight or nine different guys already, and Tavon Austin, there he is. Just got a new former teammate. Just got a new teammate in Amari Cooper. So. The extra point is good. <laughs> Sills now four catches, 141 yards, two touchdowns, and watch him. Sills runs a great route stutter, then he gets on top of the receiver or the DB and makes an unbelievable catch over the shoulder. Griff puts it right where he wants to, but these guys have an amazing connection and they know each other. They know where the ball is going to be. They spend a lot of time before practice, during practice, after practice, working on these throws and signals. There's some signals that we're talking to Spath about. Hey, we don't know what they're doing. They have a great connection. We don't mess with their doing guys. their own thing, and the coaches don't know on the sideline. Jamison Houston just totally confused by Sills. He has these guys eating out of the palm of his hand, these DBs, with all the releases he has at the line of scrimmage. And you wonder when Sills left this program to try to play quarterback at El Camino College in Southern California, if he ever saw himself coming back here and catching the ball and breaking records in front of Tavon Austin. I think he made the right decision to come back oh, yeah. and play receiver. He'll be playing on Sundays for sure. That's a big time receiver there. Dana Holgerson compared him to Chris Hogan of the New England Patriots. That type of, re of a receiver is Sills. A short kick, Chris Platt takes it at the nine. Platt gets a block. And he takes it across the 30 up to the 31-yard line. I mean, that's an unbelievable stat right there. Just 40 total yards of offense. Brewer, pump fake, now throws over the middle, and that is picked off! Shea Campbell with the interception. The third of the game. Wow. Only making his second start, made his first start last week, the junior. Had 12 tackles and two TFLs. Comes up with his first interception and a big interception, but I just don't know what Brewer's doing right here. He feels some pressure inside. He has time. He has time, but he tries to throw to his running back who's running full speed. You can't do that, let alone throw behind him, but Brewer just, he's not himself right now. I don't know what's going on with this offense, and the whole offense just seems to be a little out of sync, but you got to give Tony Gibson and this defense credit. They're making big plays at all times tonight. You got the hard hat. Got the hard hat. Three interceptions for Brewer tonight. He had three the entire season coming in. And Greer will throw this one away. He did have a receiver in the vicinity in Sills. They were trying to take a shot there. They're not going to put the, they're not going to take the, the foot off the pedal here. They're going to keep things going. Well, that's exactly what Dana Holgerson told us. With this team, we have to keep the pedal to the metal. We got to keep our foot on the gas because if we, it's not as if we don't know how to do clock management, but this team just likes to go, go, go. Yeah, they don't have that back that can take the ball and run it in between the tackles and eat up. Petaway heard what I was about to say there. <laughs> so he goes, let me take this ball, let me run it to the end zone with an explosive run there. 5'9", 212 pounds, averaging five yards a carry. Wow. 
inside zone that three man box there three man down line and he makes an unbelievable cut in the open field but wow they're running the ball well this is what they want to see. they want to do Spavital said hey we have to run the ball we want to throw it with our weapons on the outside but if we can't run the ball we won't be the offense that we're capable of being well right now this offense has put up 34 points it all started with the interception by Shea Campbell. Gave the offense great field position and cut away with a second touchdown of the year. On a chilly night, the Mountaineer is going to stay warm during all these push-ups with his team scoring so many points. Uh, that's a new Mountaineer, Justin. That's Trevor Keese. He's been the Mountaineer since April. That's a brand new Mountaineer. This offense is rolling right now. Look at those push-ups, DeMarco. That's weak. Look, at you got to straighten up the back. It's not bad. He has a lot of leather uh, on him. Zip up the so back of your leg. <laughs> the leather adds about 10 pounds to him, so, you know, I think those are pretty solid push-ups. <laughs> He's going to run out of gunpowder. He's been firing that thing so much. And now Baylor's just in survival mode trying to get into the tunnel at halftime and, and talk over what's going on with their quarterback and why their offense can't stay on the field. This will give them good starting field position. Maybe no, it takes the great bounce into the end zone. It looked, it looked like it was going out of bounds, but nothing is going Baylor's way right now. So three turnovers in the half, three interceptions, and now McClendon on the run. Diving forward, he'll get nine yards on first down. Tough, tough decision to make a quarterback change when Charlie Brew's been the guy. He's had some success, but Coach Rule, Hey, we need to some momentum. We got to get something going offensively right now. Brewer's not giving us that. McClendon, again, trying to run and just trying to get back to the line of scrimmage. So third and ten is coming up here for Baylor. David Long there with a the tackle, as well as Ezekiel Rose. Well, Brewer completed more passes to West Virginia players than his own players, three to one. And McClendon doesn't seem to be faring any better. Huge third down just to stay on the field and survive. You see these guys, they're disguising well. They're coming. They're trying to make sure McClendon knows, hey, we're coming. What are you going to do? So Michael Hastie's back in at tailback on third and ten. Now they're checking out. They saw Baylor make a check, so we're checking out. They just get the play off. McClendon dumps it off to Hasty. And Hasty, nowhere to go. David Long was there again, oh, sniffing it out. What a great job by David Long being patient there and playing Hasty inside out, not letting him get up underneath it and making a sure tackle. We talked to Coach Gibson about David Long, says he really takes on Gibson's personality out there on the football field and oftentimes he's got to tell him to calm down and just enjoy playing college football that's a good sound when you have to tell one of your players hey stop going so hard stop doing this stop doing that so fast you're messing up the play so they love david long he's a big time player for this team sales is back he lets this one bounce into the end zone that west virginia has gone over 300 yards of offense in the first half on first down, the handoff is to Tevin Bush on the end around, and there goes Bush down the sideline. They're going to mark him down at the two. A 78-yard run by Tevin Bush, chased down by Verkedrick Vaughn. Smallest guy on the field making one of the biggest plays of the night. Great job by Vaughn. not giving up making that play on him, but just a jet sweep that goes almost to the house. Good effort by Vaughn. That was good effort. Knowing this Baylor team and the way that they play, they don't give up. No matter what the situation and the score is, they're going to fight and try to rally as much as they can, but that was just another great wrinkle by Coach Spab there, the offensive coordinator, finding ways to get the ball in their athletes' hands. Greer will keep it, gets pushed from behind, and he, still waiting for the call, touchdown! Will Greer with a one-yard touchdown run. He does still have Let's some power left.
this wrinkle get up under center when you're going to run a quarterback sneak or when you're inside the, the three yard line get up under center even though you're multiple and you can do a lot of shotgun you don't have to prove it there on the goal line I like that call from Dana Holgerson and his OC Jake Spavidon first rushing touchdown of the year for Will Greer wasn't quite the push push <laughs> Bush had about a 90-yard push on that, <laughs> on that jet sweep. The extra point is good. 41 to nothing. West Virginia. And they are getting the crowd pumped up as they head into the locker room with 20 seconds to go. What a first half it was indeed. Will Greer, 15 of 22, 302 yards, three touchdowns. David Sills, four catches, 141 yards, two touchdowns. 41 nothing at the half. Let's get you to L.A. and the guys for the State Farm Halftime Show. There has been a whole lot of celebrating for West Virginia in that first half, leading 41 to nothing over Baylor as we get set to start the third quarter. Justin Kutcher alongside DeMarco Murray and Petrus Papadakis. It's cold. I put my jacket on. They didn't bring one. I'm a football player. I'm used to this. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about the good, and that, of course, is West Virginia. We talked about Will Greer in the open. He threw for over 300 yards in that first half. They're wow. clicking on all cylinders. They have to be extremely happy with his offense. Eight different receivers have touched the ball, six different running backs. They move the ball, and they get the ball to their athletes in space. They're allowing guys to get the work done on the edges, inside the tackles as well. For Baylor, though, Petros, there really hasn't been anything good to talk about. No, they've been absolutely shelled in this game. They came out in the first quarter and played some pretty good defense, but Coach Rule's defense could not hold up against the tremendous pressure that West Virginia's offense kept putting on them and their, their offense's inability to hold the ball at all. Turned the ball over at an unbelievable clip, a very uncharacteristic clip in the first half to the Bears. Evan Staley to kick off Chris Platt on the return. And Platt, he fumbles the football. That comes out. Platt is down, laying on the ground. Wow. You're just turning the ball over. I know it's cold, so sometimes your fingers and hands get numb, but both teams are in these conditions. West Virginia comes away with the ball. Unbelievable start. Wow. The rolling on the field is a fumble. Recovered by the kicking team. Chase West Riley the ball. is the one Push who down. recovers it. Chris Platt holding that ball out there with a lot of air under it, coming in like a missile there. Excuse me, it's Sean Malone. It was Hakeem Bailey that knocked it loose, coming in like a real. He put his helmet right on the ball. I know you're supposed to hold on to the ball, but I'm, I'm going to side with Platt here. There's nothing you can do when that defender puts his he helmet perfectly on that ball. I mean, that's just a hard thing to hold on to. It is, but it there is. was a lot of air under that ball, too. you got to tuck it under, especially in a game like this, where your team has had such a hard time holding on to the rock. Get down. Live to fight another day. It's just not <laughs> happening for the Bears right now. And guess who's back out there? Will Greer. On first down, there's a fumble. And covering up is Tevin Bush trying for that shovel pass again on the jet sweep. Tevin Bush had a big play on that jet sweep early. Excuse me, they're going to say it's an incomplete. Yeah, because it is a forward pass. Technically, you see it's just a little push pass there to the front. And when you drop it, it's not a fumble. Incomplete. So instead, it's second down and 10. It's a great job by Spad. You know, these coaches, they're up all night thinking of all these little wrinkles. If he would have handed it off and dropped it, it would have been a fumble. But when he throws it up in the air like that, that's considered a pass. That's why it's an incomplete. Greer. To Sills and a good defensive play right there as it's knocked away by Raleigh Tejada. And let's go down to the field and check in with Jen Hale. Justin Baylor's quarterback switch at the end of the first half was not strategic. Charlie Brewer is being evaluated for a head injury right now. He is out for the rest of the game. Meanwhile, although West Virginia looks like they're sitting pretty, Dana Holgerson reminded his team about last year when they went to Waco. They were up 38-13 when Baylor came back and made it a close game. So he wants every ounce out of his guys tonight. No cashing it in. That's right. Last year it finished 38-36. 
They had a chance for a two-point conversion. Greer, low throw to Sills, incomplete. It's very interesting, the report from Jen about Brewer, because he was taken out of the game immediately after right. throwing that final interception. And they must have wanted to take a look at him, saying, this guy's not himself right now. And they went with McClendon. And I believe McClendon's going to take it the rest of the way, especially since Jen's report. Evan Staley on for his fifth field goal attempt. He's made two, he's missed two. He had four attempts in the first quarter, I think. <laughs> and this time from 44. You can see it flutter, but it's still good from 44. So he's three for his last three. Points off turnovers here for West Virginia. Now 44 nothing. Back here in Morgantown, West Virginia, the Mountaineers ranked 13th in the country after their loss against Iowa State on the road. They're putting it to the Baylor Bears. Speaking with this coaching staff, this is what they wanted to see. They wanted to come out firing on all cylinders, offensively, defensively. They're playing extremely well. And coach, he was excited to have this game here tonight. Yeah. Casey Legg kicking off. And coming up to make the play is Josh Fleeks. Fleeks, a good return on a short kick. It is Casey Legg, the kicker, who makes the tackle. But Fleeks with a nice return for Baylor. They've had. And we heard a report from Jen Hale about the starting quarterback, Charlie Brewer, how he is out for the rest of the game. Jen, you have more on Charlie. What can you tell us? Yeah, Justin, it wasn't something that Charlie was complaining about, but the coaches say it's not like him to make bad decisions, all those interceptions. So they took a closer look at him, didn't feel like he looked right, and made the decision he needed to go back in and be evaluated. Well, Jalen McClendon is in. McClendon moving around in the pocket. McClendon runs into his own lineman. And able to take it across the 50 up to the 47-yard line of West Virginia. He's a big guy now, six foot five, 220 pounds, and just kind of leads into the middle there and gets a really good first down, one of the best first down gains the Bears have had all night. How about this? This is the first time all game Baylor has been in West Virginia territory. Credit to Coach Gibson, this defensive corner. They're drawing up a lot of pressure, confusing this offensive line, moving from three guys down to four guys down, playing some cover two, cover one on the outside as well. The handoff to Jermichael Hasty. Hasty will get a yard. Giovanni Stewart, they are the tackle. He's a young man out of Katy, Texas. Relishes playing in the Big 12, I'm sure. Came into the game with a sack and 24 tackles. There's Coach Gibson. I don't think he could be any more pleased with what his defense has put out here on the field tonight at home. A watch for McClendon maybe to keep it here on third and one. The it, big quarterback. He got big Jalen Hurd, the yeah. former running back at Tennessee. Hand it to him. Let him get going at some point. The quarterback keeps it. And the quarterback... He's going to get the first down. It's been such an awkward game for the Bears. I mean, that goes without saying. You look at the score, but Jalen Hurd, who we came in talking about, has barely been out there making plays. Denzel Mims, one of the best-looking receivers in the, in the Big 12, has not been making plays. Chris Platt had a big drop uh, right before the, the end of the half. Uh, they just really have struggled. The handoff. To Hasty. Hasty making a couple of guys miss. Up to the 31 gets five. See if they can capitalize. They've made some good plays. They got the penalty to get the first down, but when they've moved the ball and they've done some, some sort of good things, they usually take a step or two back with a penalty, a drop. Let's see if they can capitalize and potentially get points on this drive. On second and five. A drop ball on the sideline by Chris Platt. Now, the fastest guy on the field doesn't usually have the best hands, but he's still got to catch that ball and help out his quarterback. You know, there's a lot still here for the Baylor team. Uh, we talked about they're, they're not far from bowl eligibility, just two wins. Right. Much improved from last year. How they plan 
this second half and rally together, regardless of the outcome of this game, I think will say a lot about Coach Rule and the way these guys approach football. They play hard. Third down and five. Their defense played really hard early on and just it all caught up to them. In motion is her. McClendon over the middle completes the pass to Jalen Hurd. And Hurd has the first down in the red zone to the 17 yard line. This is a guy that they want to get the ball going at, at any cost. You know, he, he, he was a running back, now he's at receiver, but the transition has been fairly smooth for him, dropping some weight, but he's a guy that can go the distance at any, any time if he has the ball in his hands. First and 10 from the 17. McClendon rolling out to his right. Now he's going to tuck and run. And falls forward up to the nine yard line. He gets eight. Let's talk about Jalen a little bit. Uh, I'm impressed. I was able to meet this, this kid about two years ago when he was at the University of Tennessee. 2016 Outback MVP. He was running the ball extremely well for the balls, and then he made the transfer, made the switch. But he, he's a guy that's a dynamic player. They're not giving him those opportunities because of the way the game is going, but. Look for him to get going here shortly. See if Jalen McClendon can get Jalen Hurd the ball. On second and two, the handoff to Hasty bounces off a tackle. And Hasty is down at the two-yard line. He gets seven, setting up first and goal. Now this has clearly been the best drive for the Baylor Bears so far, and it really hasn't been that complicated. One big throw to Jalen Hurd, some tough runs by Jermichael Hasty. And all it took was a couple quarterback scrambles from McClendon to get him down here in a good position to score. First and goal right on the two. And now, maybe do they line up with Jalen Hurd in the backfield? He's they do there. on first and goal from the two. Even though he lost a lot of weight to become a receiver, he's still their short yardage running back. I like that. Yeah, he's a strong, powerful runner. Instead, they give the ball to Fleeks, and Fleeks gets into the end zone for the touchdown. Josh Fleeks, who had the good return on the kickoff, is able to punch it in from two yards out. The Bears taking a page out of West Virginia's book with the jet sweep. Yeah, Josh Fleeks, the true freshman, he's a guy that runs extremely hard and fast, but just another wrinkle, you usually give the ball a hurt down there. Hey, let's get the jet sweep going. Let's get him outside and try to create some separation and, and mismatches outside the tackles. Matt Rule and Jeff Nixon, they're finally able to call some plays and, and, and set up their offense a little bit. That's the first time all game. Connor Martin, the extra point is good. A scoring drive for the Baylor Bears. They get on the scoreboard. 44-7, West Virginia leading here in the third. And here the kickoff is taken at the 10 by Tevin Bush. Bush waiting for some blockers, and Bush nearly slipped through as he just got tripped up, and he'll be marked down at the 28-yard line. West Virginia controls their own destiny right now. If they can continue to play like they are tonight, but I think it will come down to that Oklahoma game. And that is going to be a wild atmosphere here in Milan Pushkar Stadium when the Sooners pay a visit. It should be a big Big 12 championship style game. It's a little different from the Big 12 when I was here back in 2010 was my last year. They weren't a part of this conference making it in in 2012, but I think they bring a great, great sense of urgency, great team. This, this team is amazing for this conference. First down here by McCoy. I want you to keep on talking. Delayed handoff to Kennedy McCoy. You get new facilities when you, when you join a conference like that. It's been about seven years. They're still doing construction. Uh, this campus and this entire program, and not just this program, all the athletic programs have really blossomed in this conference. And a lot of people kind of shrugged their shoulders when West Virginia joined the Big 12, and they said, you know, what about the map? How are, how are people from Oklahoma going to get all the way to Appalachia? But it really has worked out. And we're talking about that Oklahoma game here at the end of the year. That's going to be something else. Going out in motion now is McCoy. Greer backpedaling, setting up the screen for Sinkfield. Sinkfield. All the way down inside the 20. Picks up 31 yards, chased down by Henry Black. That was a pretty play. 
Good call. Just a screen, and they hit him exactly where they wanted to. When you run a screen against a blitz, it has the ability to go the distance, and they hit it right on the blitz there. Singfield did a great job hiding behind those big offensive lines, giving him an outlet to throw the ball. Once he got it, goes upfield, but just another great wrinkle there by this offense. First and 10 from the 19 here for West Virginia. Singfield now on the carry. You know, we were talking with Jake Spavitol, and he said to us, he said, we need to be more consistent in the run game, but we also have to take screens and do something with them, and they did it on that previous play. Yeah, screen is just, it's awesome. Obviously, as a running back, you love them because you get a chance to, to get outside the box. You know, you, you usually don't don't have these type of receptions, but as a running back, I loved them because I can, you know, kind of catch them off guard a little bit, run against the DBs, the safeties, and not get hit by these big all defensive line and linebackers. But the running backs, they've been playing well tonight, and this was a key yeah, thing for this offense. We have to get our runners going. We have to get our offensive line being more physical. The guys inside. We talk about the center, the right guard, the left guard. A 10-yard run for Letty Brown sets up first and goal from the five here for the Mountaineers. They give it back to Brown, and this time Letty is in. Let him in. Ten plays, 72 yards for West Virginia on that scoring drive. I'm coming off that performance they had at Ames. You just you can't imagine things going better for the Mountaineers going into the gauntlet at the end of the Big 12 season for them. Just a great showing here on a Thursday night in front of everybody. Just exactly what this team can do it. I believe this quarterback is still every bit of a Heisman Trophy candidate after this performance. Evan Staley's extra point is good. Well, they'll be singing this real loud at the end of this game. West Virginia leading 51 to 7 with 534 to go here in the third quarter. Letty Brown gets his fourth rushing touchdown of the year. They took it away and then he did it again. You want to get a workout in? You got to do all those push-ups. Oh, noodle arms tomorrow with 51 points. And then go walk Pikewood National Golf Club and you'll be all set. You won't be able to feel your legs or your arms. That's a tough state. Even the golf club clubs. <laughs> and this will go into the end zone for a touchback. McClendon. Pressure coming off the edge across the middle, and that pass is caught by Chris Platt. So it's now 18 straight games of the reception for Platt. And that's one of those things overcoming adversity. We've seen Platt have a couple drops. Here he has a positive play. Might not mean that much for this game, but it means a lot for the future. Well, he's a senior guy, so he knows he made those mistakes, but just the, the fact that he's still in the game and he's still trying, that's what you want to see. I'm going to go down swinging at all costs. McClendon keeps it. And McClendon loses the ball as he goes to the ground. Tackle by David Long. But a seven-yard run for Jalen McClendon. A good job again on that zone read, keeping it. And he's done a good job of coming in and just kind of stabilizing things for this Baylor offense. The, the chaos that was the Baylor offense kind of ended uh, when Jalen McClendon came into the game. Yeah, in second-string quarterbacks, they usually don't get that many reps during the week. So the fact that he's in here, he's protecting the ball. And he's making some good throws. He's had a couple of drops from his, from his receivers, but the fact that Jalen is coming to the game, he's kind of gave them a little momentum at certain times. McClendon keeps it, rolls out to his right, throws towards the sideline, and that one is caught. Nice catch by Tyquan Thornton. And that goes for 18 yards. Thornton's their guy that goes over the top. Not a big guy at all, just a freshman, 165 pounds. And you have to respect his ability to take the top off the defense. Bailey lets him make that cut. A well-delivered ball on the run by Jalen McClendon. And Baylor's on the move again. And a nice job getting the arms underneath that ball by the freshman Thornton. First and 10 from the 23-yard line. And it's the handoff to Fleeks. But Fleeks has nowhere to go. And he just gets thrown to the ground. Henry. He's a 
guy that has played 45 games. That's every game in his career. He's a leads this team with two interceptions. He's one of my favorite players on this team. He flies around. He makes plays in the passing game. He's not afraid to tackle as well, but I love the way he plays. And the best ability is availability. I'm sure the scouts, they're going to look at the 45 games, 45 plays. That's great for that young guy. All starts for Drayvon Askew Henry in his career. Second down and 16. Pressure coming. McClendon able to find Thornton again. And there may have been the first missed tackle of the game. Shea Campbell missed a tackle. This one goes for 11. And that was something they really wanted to concentrate on after Montgomery ran right through him like butter. The, the West Virginia defense had a really tough time. There's Kenny Bigelow. Montgomery from Iowa State ran right through these guys. They missed 31, 32 tackles last week, and that was a real point of emphasis for Coach Gibson going into this game. Jones goes in motion here on third and five. McClendon completes the pass. And as to Denzel Mims, who gets tackled at the one, a 17-yard completion, and now Mims extends his consecutive game streak to 19 with a catch. He's their third down guy. Coming in, he leads the team with touchdowns with four of those, but he's a guy that they needed in the first half that they're just starting to get going a little bit. No sign yet from the officials. And there it is, touchdown. The touchdown by Jalen McClendon. And that's an impressive drive by the Baylor Bears. It's all fight and all heart by this offense. Not giving up, knowing what the score is, but hey, we're going to continue to play no matter what the situation is. We're going to fight and scratch and claw till it's double zero at the end of the clock. Looked like encroachment there by the West Virginia defense, but no flag, no foul. Touchdown Bears and Coach Rule's speech. Seems to be having a little bit of an effect on his team. There he is talking to her. And they love her the way he plays, the way he practices. They say he loves, loves football. Well, a couple of good drives on this quarter for Baylor as they now trail 51 14. 23 seconds to go here in this third quarter, 51 14. West Virginia leading, but a good drive put together by Jalen McClendon. Yes, he was perfect on the drive, 77 yards, and he capped it off with a one-yard touchdown run. 20 games he's played, but that was a good drive right there, leading that offense down a good seven. He's a dual-threat guy that can run, as we saw in that last drive, and he opened it up a little bit with his legs. Drew Galitz to kick off here for the Bears, and they're going to try to onside kick ball is loose still loose the flag is thrown not sure it traveled the needed distance who crossed the line still no signal yet on who's recovered it good onside kick really Perfect onside kick. That's what you want. Pop it up high in the air. Let your guys have a play at the ball in the sky. Very well executed onside kick. It's got to go 10. It went the 10 yards. Goes the 10. There are two fouls by the kicking team. Offside, number 84. That foul's declined. Kick catch interference, number 84. That foul's accepted. 15 yards from the end of the kick. First down, Baylor. So two fouls on Haskins. Thanks, Dean. And why run the play? <laughs> Gotta give the guy room. Well, here's a screen to Sills. And Sills is gonna lose a couple of yards as Jack Allison is in at quarterback. Yeah, I like seeing the quarterback change. Uh, I don't know why David Sills is still in the game. Jack Allison. A sophomore, he's the guy of the future, and he's huge. 6'6", 200 pounds in a Miami. You know what's huge? The lead for the Mountaineers, oh. number three. Fourth quarter. 
Here in Morgantown, it has really been all West Virginia. Baylor, if you want a moral victory, they outscored the Mountaineers in the third quarter, 14 to 10. Allison is in his first pass attempt to the end zone. Oh, Gary, the touchdown for Gary Jennings. Second of the game for Jennings, and Allison is loving it. Coach Holgerson wants to show the fans what the quarterback of the future can do. Six foot six, delivers a beautiful ball to Jennings. Here's a route. Jennings was, just ran a seam route and covered two safeties, staying outside the hash, and he just bends it right in the middle, and Allison finds it, but there was no one to contest that throw. That's the second time that's happened for Jennings. He's had two easy touchdowns. Three catches, 100 yards, two touchdowns for Jennings. Snap, not a good one. A good adjustment by the holder, Billy Kinney. And Staley, a little stutter step. He puts the extra point in. But Jack Allison with his first touchdown pass of the season. It is all Mountaineers here in Morgantown. 14.53 to go here in the fourth quarter. 58 to 14, they lead. Will Greer, he's got the ski hat on. Yep, it is that cold. His night is done. Rightfully so. He's he's had an unbelievable night. I mean, he's he's one of the top quarterbacks. We had a chance to see Justin Herbert from Oregon, and Greer is a fantastic quarterback with a fast release, and he puts the ball exactly where he wants to be. Luke Hogan. Kickoff. Fleeks from the nine. Fleeks. Penalty flag is thrown. Let's see where they mark him down at the 22-yard line, but let's find out what this flag is for. I have been impressed with the way Baylor's responded here in the second half. They really could have wilted and made this thing a lot worse. McClendon over the middle. It's dropped by Josh Fleeks. That was the announcer jinx by Petros Papadik. <laughs> Kind of been the story. They've had a couple drops, and you know, this offense just never got comfortable from start to finish with Brewer throwing those interceptions early on. Never quite looked right, and they took him out because of the head. But this this offense, they you know the bye week is always hard to come back after a bye week. They've had a long couple of days, and losing to Texas, having that bye week, and you tend to lose the fundamental side of the game at times. Fundamentals. That's one of the things that Matt Rule really focuses on. Ebner trying to find some place to go, could not. Under three and a half to go here. Speaking of fundamentals, that was really one of the things Dana Holgerson, who is, you know, an offensive genius, throw the ball downfield, all that stuff, but that wasn't his message after losing the game at Iowa State. His message was blocking and tackling, and, and that's how simple this game is, and you can see he, he's still coaching about as hard as possible because he knows what's to come in the Big 12. You got to love him, just his personality. That was my first time meeting him in person, but I love his personality. He's well respected around this league, but he's such an honest guy. He's very blunt with his team. And he knows what they can be if they just continue to play the way they played tonight. Ebner gets tackled at the 35. He needs two more yards for that first down marker. You know, it wasn't just Dana Holgerson who knew what was at stake. We talked how we got a chance to speak with Gary Jennings. And I thought Jennings, we were all just so impressed with how intelligent he is as a young man. But he talked about the importance of this game and getting things back and, and what they did about those fundamentals, their route running, about where they're making their steps, their outs, all that stuff, but also about what they have coming up. It's this game, and then they know how hard their November is going to be. And he echoed every coach that we spoke to. Hey, we knew what we did last week. It was wrong. That wasn't the West Virginia team that we're accustomed to being, but we had a great week of practice. We had a, a, a players only meeting offensively and defensively and we said hey guys we know what's at stake we know the games we have coming up this is a great jump start if we can play the way that we've been playing the first five games and lead us the way we want to be led and Jennings he's an impressive young man I will say and full disclosure we spoke with Jennings first so that was before the coaches came in to talk to us and this is again what they have coming up next week they're at Texas that could be a huge huge showdown 
here against TCU on the 10th at Oklahoma State, and they wrap things up against Oklahoma. Is that how empty the stadium is? Gary can hear us? <laughs> For Baylor, still a lot to play for, as Jen had talked about in the open. Hoping to go to a bowl game, they need two more wins to become bowl eligible. This is who they have left on the docket. And can they get two wins out of those last four games? Absolutely they can. I mean, this is a much better football team. And we'll see what the situation is with Charlie Brewer. I, I, I didn't mind seeing McClendon out there running around, but I, I believe Coach Rule's team is much better than, than they showed tonight. Coming off the bye week, like DeMarco said, sometimes things just get away from you. And that's certainly what happened here. It's Lorenzo Dorr on the carry. And for West Virginia, you know, you talk about Gary Jennings and his resolve about coming back from that game last week in this team. They really were tired of hearing everybody talk in this town about how poorly they played in Ames. And, and they've erased that memory tonight. And I can tell with the veteran group, they have the blinders on. They're not listening to the outside noise outside the locker room. It's all about the guys in this locker room, the coaching staff and the support staff. So I, I know a lot of older guys, but they say, hey, guys, let's not listen to that. That's all noise. Let's hunker down. We know what's at stake. Let's finish these games and play the way we can play. Third and nine, trying to run out the clock. And that should do it. West Virginia. They got off to a great start. A touchdown in the opening minute. A couple of missed field goals kept Baylor in it early. But then it all came undone for Baylor. Their offense couldn't keep West Virginia's offense off the field. And West Virginia, a 44-point win, the largest win in this series history. We've seen some crazy games between these two. But this one, 58-14, to the Mountaineers take down the Baylor Bears to improve to 6-1, and 4-1 in Big 12 play. For Petros Papadakis, DeMarco Murray, and Jen Hale, I am Justin Kutcher saying so long from Morgantown. We'll get you to L.A. and the guys in the studio right after this break.